1955, down by the river, put and muck fishing. Quiet Sunday afternoon, all the chores have been finished. Catholics are in the field searching for lovely flowers to pick, to smell, to taste. Put hooks the first one, her little arms holding on, holding, pulling, pulling. The fish snaps up into the air and looks around, its eyes staring right at her. Little Indian girl, little fisherman, little gift from above. Her hands grasp the pole, her eyes widen, her breath quickens, flowers picked out of earth, snapped at the stem, noses sniff in the air, searching for the scent of God, all his creations, now devoured by humans, flowers, fish, little Indians with crosses around their necks, flowers, lovely flowers, fish. It jumps once more and snaps the line, going down to the bottom, down where the water is calm. It rests, swallows the fat worm, unaware of the creation, unaware. Muck gets a nibble, the hairs on his arm stand up. Catholics in the field singing songs about glory and salvation. Muck dances the worm, singing his song beneath his breath, soft enough so the nuns do not hear him. He shuffles his feet, trying to remember his dance. Worm dances beneath the water. A salmon spots it, swims towards it. Hunger, dance, song, shuffling of bare brown feet. Fields of flowers, fields of salvation. River, water. Fish takes the worm, fields of song. Worm becomes a hook. The salmon snaps its head to the left and then to the right. Hook goes deeper. Muck pulls, his little Indian arms pulling, his song getting louder, his feet quickening to the beat of the drum inside his head. He pulls, he sings, he shuffles his feet like the old days, like the days back home. He pulls the fish out of the water. He takes a small club-like branch and snaps the fish on top of the head twice. Fish stops. Muck pulls the hook and what is left of the worm out of the fish's mouth drops it back into the river. Fields of flowers, songs of glory and salvation. Two Indian kids on the river's edge, 1955. Worms on hooks, songs, drum, paint, memories of home, silently breathing songs of glory. 1978, I took my first hit of acid and the colors of my hands held me for 12 hours as they changed from a golden purple to a magical orange. I remember hugging the toilet one time when I chugged homemade strawberry wine and it went down better than it came out. There was a time when I crawled home after 18 beers and my fingernails were almost torn off as I made it to my bed and collapsed enjoying this small victory for a drunk at the age of 19. Smoked a ton of hash and scrambled each day for $10 to buy a gram of foreign hash that was cut with Vaseline to give it weight and it burned good as did my lungs. When I was older, I thought I had control and I gathered a taste for Jack Daniels and a few ice cubes. And it was smooth, yes, and I mixed that with magic mushrooms and I became the king of a fairy tale story. 20 years sober, but the tastes are still in my mouth, but I made it only to become a recluse, a liar, a poet among thieves, a capable fisherman, a half-assed father, a dead lover. And the irony of it all does not go unseen as the fire of the pipe the stillness of the tasty poison, the call of my addictions, to me sounds like angels upon the wall of a destiny that should have destroyed me. But I'm still here, you bastards, and my hands glow from purple to a gentle orange. I have changed and find myself on a highway wetted with the tears of our lost. I am here to meet the man who has taken all the women and has put them on the side of the road in a puddle by a tree in a ditch or slowly floating to the bottom of a creek. I get a ride and I remember the truck in every detail 
and the smells of the dead encircle this man as he smokes and opens his window, he never looks at me. I do not see fear or sorrow from this man, and he's not from here, so he says. And he tells me of his family, his children, and the cost of gasoline. I look at him as he, uh, he appears to be on fire, and the heat of him begins to burn my fingers as I reach out and touch him. And all he sees and has seen evaporates into a hot mist and falls out the window as he blows smoke from his cigarette out into the world he has forsaken. And when I get out of the truck, he waves a tattooed arm at me as the medicine I have given him begins to carry into his blood. And all the women circle around him and they cry and they scream and it is the screams that envelop him. And he accepts the disease I have given him by the touch of my hand. I have erased him as the women cry and scream. And this opens up the sky as the shine brings you home. I've spent some time in a few madhouses and not that I was forced to. It was a, it was, I did not want to go, I did not want to live anymore and I'd stopped eating. And so I walked into the stream of craziness and accepted that I did not belong there. And those I met along the way accepted me, accepted me as well. And we had a good time of it. In the mornings, I would awake to the sound of a whistle as the guy in the next room was, of course, a lifeguard. And he was supposedly a very good good swimmer in his younger days. And now he can be found on the third floor section 15 of this place. And he whistles to those who are breaking the rules of this pool, which of course is an oddly painted hallway consisting of drab lighting and the smells of men who do not care for themselves. And the whistle gets me up and I dress and look at my face in the mirror. And today I almost recognize who I used to be. In the evening after a meal of tea and toast, and that's a start for me because I have only been here for a few days and already I want out. And after my cold tea, I walk back to my room and I am greeted by Christ who says, welcome my child to me. And I say hello and he kneels in the corner and recites a recipe for some meal he must have had when he was a child. And I lay on my bed and I close my eyes and when I open them, Jesus is standing over me, chewing on an apple. And I thought to myself, how interesting that Jesus is eating the apple. And as he chewed, I swear, I saw a snake come out of one of his eyes. And I screamed and Jesus screamed. And the lifeguard whistled as someone had pissed in the pool. And all I could think of was how many steps it was to the front door of this place and how I, how I would just leave and go back to this crazy world we all live in. In the deepest part of the river, there lived a great sturgeon and she swam along the bottom and fed upon the dead who had fallen. She was about 300 years old and when she was full, she came to the surface and jumped as high as she could. And all the males came to her and she kissed each male and let them have her. Months later, she quietly went to her favorite part of the river and there she re released her eggs in the millions and then began again to swim in the bottom and to search for any new bodies that had fallen from upriver, which she feasted upon with her old softly kif kissed lips. The legend goes that a fisherman had fallen into the waters and was drowning when the great sturgeon came to him and asked him for a kiss. He agreed and the two fell in love and <clears throat> together they would feed upon all the food at the bottom of the river. One day her eggs came to life and created the people across the water. The people lived there for centuries and the sturgeon and man would would visit them from time to time, bringing them food to survive the cold winters until the people too walked into the water and fell to the bottom as the man kissed his lover. Today, we do not fish for sturgeon as the numbers have been decimated by overfishing and loss of spawning grounds. 
Whenever I catch a sturgeon in my net, I let her go and she always turns back and smiles as she flicks her mighty tail and splashes me. My son always laughs as I stand there stunned and wet while the great sturgeon slowly swims away and turns back to blow us a kiss. We both wipe our lips as the great sturgeon falls to the bottom of the water. There waiting for her is her lover. He kisses her one last time. She cries as she begins to eat him. I would like to say thank you to the nuns and the priest who abused me when I was six. Thank you for doing that to me. And if you'd like to see how I am, just look, just look out your window as I, as I pass by because I know where you live, you old fuck. And to the sisters, I would like to thank you for toughening me up for later in life it was needed. And I shook off all comers and I took the pain you gave me when you stepped on my six-year-old brown hand and told me to be still and that God was watching me. And when I finally confronted that old fuck, I slapped him across the face and in his eyes, I could see the lust he had for me those decades before. And now he weeps as the pain in his face changes and I walk away still that little brown boy in need of comfort. And I know that I am who I am and fuck you abusers. You cannot have me. You cannot destroy me. I can do that all by myself, thank you. To the men who used me when I was nine or 10, thank you for scarring me and giving me nightmares as they still haunt me here at 56 in my little office where I punch out poems to soothe the soul, where I can relive the torture of being touched by men. Thank you, and I will visit one day and go up to you, slap you, kick you, bite you, end you. The music changes, and I have some new kick-ass headphones, and I can hear all the greats and remember times when I was 15 and drinking and doing LSD and tripping in a bar and watching a Pink Floyd cover band, and they were awesome. And the bar was lit with very cool lights and I was tripping. And when it was over, the house lights came on and it was then that I realized that the rest of the bar that night was full of fully patched outlaw bikers. And there I was 15 and long hair and brown skinned and tripping. But they let me float on out of there and into the streets and me and my friends who were also tripping, we floated home and as I am here now, I put on some blues and write some poems about this or that. I wanted to say thank you to all the girls I knew when I was 14. And we all hung out on the weekends and we did our best to be as drunk as we could. And there were such gentle moments. I remember being with a girl and we made love and giggled as those around us were so wasted and they puked and they pissed themselves and we still conquered our teenage years with the best of them and even today i remember each girl's name and i remember how we made love and how we drank until early morning and i just want to thank them for loving me when i was 14 and so skinny and brown and long-haired and not even sure i liked myself back then and i am sure i do not like me now the edges are creepy the hair is gone, the eyes are crooked, so is the nose. I weep myself to write a poem for all you girls, even though I know I have been forgotten. <laughs>